Let's say you're on the internet and you're trying to search for, um, uh, well, let's say porpoises, but you don't have a search engine like Google. How could you build a search engine? Or rather, how do search engines work? Searching directly for text will give you a lot of pages, but not necessarily the ones you're looking for. One method to combat this that is fairly well known is the PageRank algorithm, which was created by Larry Page and Sergey Brin. The basic idea is that the importance of a source or page is a function of the number of sources that refer to it, and not just the text in it alone. In order to talk further about this, we're going to need to use some graph theory and some linear algebra. First off, a directed graph is a collection G of a set of vertices V and a set of directed edges E, where the elements of E are pairs of elements in V, where the first element of a pair is the initial vertex and the second element of a pair is the terminal vertex. So for example, if we had this graph G, where B is the set of A, B, and C, and E is the set of A, C, B, C, 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 and C, B, we would have a graph that looks kind of like this. To make the connection to our question a little bit more explicit, you could define an internet I, if you wanted to, as a collection of pages P and a collection of links between those pages L. A link, little l, is a directed edge between two pages. Next, we need to define the importance of a page. Recall that importance of a page is dependent on the pages that link to it. The intuition here will help motivate the definition. First off, if two pages A and B link to a third page C, but B links to a ton of other pages, then we want A to give more importance to C than B does. The importance then should be associated with the link and not the initial page, but it's dependent on the initial page of a link. And so we can define the importance of a link as one over the out degree of its initial page, where the out degree of a page or vertex is the number of edges that have that page as an initial vertex. So in this graph or internet of five pages with these links, we can label each link with its corresponding importance like so. We can organize the information in this graph by recording the importance values using a table, where the rows and columns are labeled with the vertices. We read from a column to a row. That is, for instance, the importance of the link from 2 to 3 is given by 0.25. What's really nice about this table is that it's just a weighted transition matrix for our directed graph, and so we can do some linear algebra with it. The page rank is based on how likely you are to visit a page given this matrix that describes the importance relationships that link the pages together. In particular, with our previous example, assume that you start on any of the five pages with equal likelihood. Then the odds that you would move to page three with your first click is just the probability that you start on page two and click the link to page three, or that you start on page five and click the link to page 3, which gives a probability of 0.15, or 15% of the time you would end up on page 3. You can do this all at once for each page using matrix multiplication, where we multiply the vector of probabilities that you are on a given page by the weighted transition matrix. Each time we multiply by this weighted transition matrix, a link is clicked, and the probability of what page you are on is updated as the resulting vector. The page rank vector is the vector of probabilities that you get after taking the limit as the number of times you multiply by the matrix goes to infinity, or rather, as the power of the matrix goes to infinity. Thus, the page rank of a page is just the value in the page rank vector that corresponds to that page, and can be interpreted as the probability that one would end up on that page via random clicking through the web. So for our example, we have this vector as the page rank vector. And so by the page rank algorithm, you would most likely want to be on pages two or five as opposed to pages one, three, or four. Essentially, page rank does the random searching for you. So you don't have to go randomly clicking through a ton of pages. It also helps when looking through pages with keywords. Instead of searching through pages for frequency of keywords alone, a search engine can initially section off part of the internet that has pages with the keyword occurring, and then use this linear algebraic process of determining page rank to eliminate useless pages that just have the word repeatedly, for instance, with no content, 
and finds pages that are linked to by other sources to present first. There are a few problems with just using the weighted transition matrix alone and determining a page rank vector from that. First off, if your internet is disconnected, that is, suppose you search the internet for, I, I mean, let's say dogs, and the search engine is able to section off this piece of the internet, where you have two components that are not connected. Secondly, suppose that instead, the search sectioned off this piece of internet, where two pages just feed into a third page. In both cases, the page rank vector using the weighted transition matrix alone is ambiguous. If you're not sure why, it's a really good exercise to compute the page rank vector for both of these graphs based on their weighted transition matrix. However, I'm going to pause here a second because I'm just going to give the answer for the second case uh, just about now. So in the second case, we end up with a page rank vector of all zeros. But we would want the third page to be the most important, so this doesn't really make sense for what we want the page rank algorithm to do for us. The reason for the first ambiguity, if you're interested, is covered in the source linked in the description below. There are no notes for this video because I think that the source I used was really good at going through and motivating each of the topics that I went over so far in this video. But anyhow, let's continue. In order to fix these issues, we need to make sure that whatever internet or graph we are working with is connected. And so we're going to need to introduce Page and Brin's solution a dampening factor p, which is strictly between 0 and 1. To motivate this, one can think of p as the probability that on some page, one decides to just directly type in an address or just start over the search with another browser that opens up randomly to another page. So given an internet of n pages, there is a p over n chance that one decides to start over. This dampening factor allows us to define what is known as the page rank matrix which is also known as the Google matrix, if you're interested. But anyway, the page rank matrix is given by the following, where A is just the matrix that we had from looking at the weighted transition matrix of the graph of the internet alone. Using this matrix, we can get a page rank vector that actually makes sense in the scenarios that gave us problems before, because the page rank matrix kind of forces all of the pages in your internet to be connected, even if they might not be. So, now that we have the page rank matrix and we know what the page rank vector is, we can go ahead and summarize the algorithm as follows. First, you section off part of the internet using some basic search method like frequency of a keyword. Second, you assign an importance to each of these pages by looking at the links between them in your query. Third, generate a weighted transition matrix for the graph that is weighted by importance, and then using that matrix and picking a dampening factor, you can make a page rank matrix. Assuming that there are n pages in the search query, you can compute the following limit to get the page rank vector, and then you just need to present the pages in the order of their page rank. Now, page rank isn't the only way that one can search through the internet, but it is one of the most famous, and there are tons of different graph theoretic ways you can approach the internet. However, they would definitely not fit into this video, because it's been pretty long already. So that's where I'm going to cut it off. If you enjoyed it, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos. As always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.